Quick tips. See the video description for timestamps index. If you are watching on YouTube, try enabling the English subtitles. See notes at the end of the video. For a quick recap, keep an eye on the visual hints throughout the video. Key shortcuts are displayed at the top right of the screen. Mouse button clicks are shown as colors around the cursor. Yellow and blue for the left and right buttons, respectively. Today we'll see one way of making a dispersion effect in Paint Shop Pro. It is also known as dissolve effect. We'll start with this picture, and eventually we'll end up with something similar to this one. I'm going to use brushes available at Brush Heasy. Check the description for links. So, let's start. To save us time, I've already saved a selection of the subject in the alpha channel of the image. I'll load it and feather it, using the selections menu. We can now promote it as a new layer and deselect. I'll name this layer dispersion, and I'll make a copy calling it subject. The two layers are now identical, each containing a copy of the subject. Next, we'll create yet another layer to be used as our new background. I'll name it and fill it with a gradient, from the materials palette. It is now time to prepare the dispersion layer. We need the right side of the subject, stretched all the way to the end of the canvas. This can be done with the smudge or the push tool. But I'll use the warp brush, which is the equivalent of Photoshop's liquify. Warp mode, should be set to push. The strength can be set to a value near 80, and be adjusted as we go. It affects texture smoothness during stretching. Edge mode should be set to warp around, but feel free to try the other modes too. Set hardness to zero. If your computer struggles when warping, set draft quality to a lower setting. But leave best quality enabled under final apply. To adjust the brush size while working. You can hold down the alt key while dragging the mouse with the left button. The brush size along with the initial point of your warping determines how much of the initial area will get distorted. Try not to overwarp areas close to the subject edges. These are the areas the dispersion effect will start from. I'm fast forwarding the video at this point so you don't get bored. And here is the final warped image. The next step is to mask our two layers, but in opposite ways. A black mask for dispersion, to hide it. And a white mask for subject, to keep it visible. The idea is to add particles on both masks but depending on the layer, subject or dispersion, they will either conceal or reveal, respectively, the existed content beneath them. Since I'll work on masks, I set the default black and white colors in the materials palette. Then I'm starting with the subject layer. I'm using a couple of brushes from a free set called Broken Glasses 1. Check the description for the link.
To speed up my workflow, I change the brush size by holding down the Alt key while dragging with the left mouse button. To change the angle, first I click once inside the rotation field on the tool options bar. And then I use the mouse wheel. Time to work on the dispersion. I'm activating its mask in the layers palette. I'm switching the foreground color to white, and I start brushing particles on this mask too. Once again, I'm changing the brush size and rotation as I go. By the way, don't be afraid of undoing if you need to, it's perfectly fine. It may also be necessary to revisit the subject and the dispersion masks a few times. Adding or removing particles until you get the desired result. Just remember to brush with the correct color. As a matter of fact, in PaintShop Pro we can use the left and the right mouse buttons to paint with the foreground and the background colors, respectively. We are getting there. But let me remove some particles from the subject, using a regular, white, soft brush. Right now there is too many of them. And here it is. I'm satisfied, so I'm keeping it like this. Just a couple final touches, to make the picture a bit more imposing. First let's warm the scene a little bit, with a color accent layer. I've done some experimentation already, and I know what color I'd like to use here. So I'll just paste the HTML code, in the color picker dialog, and I'll fill the layer with it. When accenting a scene, I mostly use the soft light blend mode. Feel feel to try other modes too. But in this case it's too strong, so I'm tuning the opacity down to 50%. Lastly, I'm adding a curves adjustment layer, to change the contrast. I'm making the blacks a little lighter. and I'm making the whites a little brighter. I'm also making the midtones a bit brighter too. Here is the final result. Before and after. To read this, you may want to pause the video. For the dispersion effect we created two copies of the subject on separate layers. We stretched the right side of the subject on the lower layer, and we applied a black mask on it. We then applied a white mask on the other layer. Lastly, we painted the particles on the masks of both layers. Thank you for watching.